They're not. There's power there. I'm calling it witchcraft. I'm calling it demonic. I'm calling it a witch or a warlock. I'm calling it all these things. And there is demon possession. But the people in that congregation are easily to be molded. They are supercharged emotionally through the worship. They're getting into a place. And even though they went there to worship God in spirit and in truth, because there's a devil at the front, they're going to be put under that influence. And some of them will manifest emotionally. It doesn't mean they're demon-possessed. It doesn't mean demons are being transferred. It means as long as you put yourself in that situation, you are taking the chance of being manipulated and controlled emotionally by those people. And you will keep going back to those meetings, and you will start backing those teachers, because you will think they're anointed, and you will think they have power from God. But that's the deception. The deception is not people getting demon-possessed through the laying on of hands. The deception is, if you're going to worship this, go give yourself to it. That will lead to hardened heart, a lot of sin, a lot of sin in your life, you sinning openly and, and justifying yourself in a reprobate mind, not demon possession. Like I said, if you got proof, show it to me. Not demon possession. But that's my answer to why there are manifestations in these meetings. That is my answer to why these people are completely under the influence of the Spirit, because they're in service, and they're there. These same people, when they go home, they're fine. If you know anything about the Kundalini spirit, it manifests all the time. When you're driving your car, when you're exercising, when you're watching TV, when you're asleep. These people only speak about manifestations when they're supercharged emotionally at the meetings. When people are manifesting and the words have been preached and all the music has supercharged them, then there's a manifestation because of the, the power of that demonic force in that meeting. But when they go home, there's no manifestation. So... You need to just do your research, and you need to be honest with yourself. I want to very quickly go over one more thing. Also, it says, I, I've listened to some people preach. I'm not going to name names. But this person uh, said directly, he said, because they were talking about this Kundalini spirit, and this person said, don't, you know, even the scriptures say, don't let any man suddenly lay hands on you. The scripture doesn't say that. It's the opposite. The, the scripture says, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be a partaker of another man's sins. Keep thyself pure. The scriptures say, hey, Christian, don't lay hands suddenly on anybody. But this person who's teaching the Kundalini Spirit, he reversed it. He said, no, the, the Bible says, don't let any man suddenly lay hands on you. Don't let any man suddenly lay hands on you. That's twisting the scripture. The Bible is clear about twisting the scripture. And what spirit's doing that, and why? That's a, a perversion of the scripture. And I'm going to give you a real quick interpretation that I found online. This is not my interpretation. I found this very quickly online. I liked it, and if something works, just go with it. Okay? I believe in this interpretation of this is First Timothy 5:22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of another man's sins. Keep thyself pure. Okay? This is the interpretation. One of the ways that laying on of hands is used is to separate an individual to the ministry. In this context, Paul tells Timothy not to ordain anyone hastily. He said already, uh, he had already instructed that all bishops, see, earlier in the book of Timothy, he had already instructed that all bishops and deacons should first be proven. That's 1 Timothy 3.10. So he was already talking about it. Look, this is how you deal with the church. This is how you see if people are approved. This is how you see if God is calling people. Those who ordain anyone into the ministry, laying on of hands, are putting their approval on that individual. It's true. Therefore, to a degree, are responsible for that person's ministry. Very true. Paul is warning against doing this hastily, lest you become a partaker of, in other words, responsible because of your endorsement of their sins. That's a clear interpretation of that Timothy verse. And they completely twist it. And they say, it's not about you not approving people quickly. The Bible also says, don't approve a novice. Don't do it. Uh, don't allow a novice to be raised up quickly. In other words, don't just lay hands on some guy because he says he's going to serve God with all his heart and he's going to be the best minister ever. Don't do it. The Bible is very clear on this. And it goes a little deeper, and I, uh, this is the one I really agree with. 
This could also be applied to not laying hands on anyone for the purpose of transferring God's power. And that's what I really believe Paul's saying. Because back then the power of God was operating on a different level because the church was beginning. God was allowing a great manifestation and power of His Spirit to get the church going and to encourage a church that was greatly persecuted. So trust me, when they laid hands on each other back then, it was powerful and it was anointed and God used it. This could also be applied to not laying hands on anyone for the purpose of transferring God's power, such as in healing the sick. We need to give some thought to it and be led by the Lord. We should not pray for every request, such as when the sorcerer, Simon, asked for prayer so that he could give the Holy Spirit to others, as he has seen the disciples do. Peter perceived that his heart was not right and rebuked him instead of giving him a blessing of the laying on of hands. And that's Acts 8, 9-23. So it's actually the opposite. God saying lay hands only on no man. There was a sorcerer who wanted the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and he's like, yeah, give that to me. And, and Peter, uh, Peter's like, no, your heart's not right. So it's actually Christians not giving God's power as opposed to Satan transferring his power to born-again believers who have the Holy Spirit. This is saying the Holy Spirit's greater than Satan. That's what the scriptures say. People who say that Christians with the Holy Spirit that go to the altar for prayer are getting demon-possessed, you're saying that demons are greater than the Holy Spirit and that God's Word isn't faithful. And like I said, if you have scripture, show it to me. I'll consider it. But in all these teachings that I've heard these men preach, I'm telling you right now that much of it, absolutely much of it, is based on their twisting of the scriptures. Just like the pre-tribulation rapture and just like once saved, always saved. It's not clearly defined in scriptures. They're twisting it. Okay? I just want to make sure that I got everything. Um, it is so important that we do this the right way. You're going to be accountable to what you preach. God's going to hold you accountable. Teachers are held at a higher standard. And I'm telling you right now, please reconsider this kundalini nonsense. Demon possession of unsus unsuspecting Christians going to the altar wanting to commune with God and they walk away demon possessed. Because if you take this to the least common denominator, you have to admit that according to your preaching, anybody who got the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the last 25 years could be susceptible to a kundalini demon rather than the Holy Spirit. In other words, oh yeah, have you ever been emotionally at church? Yeah, you got a kundalini man, sorry. Yeah, that's not God. And I've also noticed that a lot of these men who are preaching this kundalini spirit, they seem kind of bitter, especially at the... Th these are people who are part of um, either a prophetic movement or uh, the spirit-led movement or the Pentecostal movement. Basically, the churches where they glorify God via the Holy Spirit and the usage of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, tongues, prophecy, all that kind of stuff, they were in those movements and they've been hurt or they backed away and now they're kind of bitter and they're saying, oh, you guys got kundalinis and you guys aren't right, you guys aren't this. I would admonish you and not judge you, but admonish you to please reconsider and please be honest with yourself about searching the scriptures. I'm not a man's judge. Um, but I felt very led to do these videos because there has to be a standard against teachings like this that aren't biblical and that are creating an immense amount of sorry about that but creating an immense amount of confusion within God's people and getting getting people to fear and getting people to feel like because they went to the church to worship God they're now demon possessed that's not fair to them you have to ask yourself if what you've done is fair to the people of God is it fair to the average person who's gone to church and believes they got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues, and they're praising God, but then they find out that their pastor was a part of some movement that you've condemned? And now they think, oh my gosh, I might have a kundalini. And now they're, they're in a bad place. And now their faith is wrecked. And now they don't know what to think, and they don't know where the answers are. That's why I'm doing this video, because people like that, they shouldn't have to fear like that. They shouldn't have to. You're not getting demon-possessed in church. If you went to church to worship God, you did not walk out demon-possessed. That's not how it works. And like I said, if you care enough, you'll keep searching. I'm going to put all the links to my works that I cited in this video. I'm going to put them down there. If you care enough, you'll read. 
If you care enough, you'll investigate. And if you don't, then, then that's on you. I do these videos to help people, but those who truly want help, the scriptures are clear. They search for themselves and they find. Another man cannot search for you. You have to do that yourself.